to the cookies. Try not to bring a bought cookie. Gary looks They're guilty. <laughs> if you're going to bring a bought cookie, please take it out of the container and put it on a plate. But the main thing is today is our day for our last thankful tree. Can anybody guess what today is? People. People? Did somebody say people? Very good. Yes, it's for today is to be thankful for our family and our friends, but the most important is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is number one, but remember you can also do our family and friends. I hope you enjoyed the tree and the tags that we put on it. I thought it was kind of fun, and I always say cool. You can tell I'm old. <laughs> So, okay, I want to thank everybody that participated. Thank you. Anybody else has an announcement? Yes, I don't think so. Okay. All right. So, if there's no more announcements, if you'll be an attitude of prayer, Lord, I'll pray.
scared, looking on us with loving eyes. And if you turn in your hymnal to page 154, we'll sing all down the power of Jesus' name. He will judge the world with righteousness 
and a people for the truth. If you'll join me in a unison prayer, please, put in your bulletin. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, forbid the time we have forgotten you, the times we have turned away from you, the times we have laughed at you, the times we have ignored you, and the needs of our brothers and sisters. Bring us close once more, that we might dwell in your redeeming love. In your holy name we pray.
message. Good morning. And good morning to Maria and Teddy. Well, thank you girls for helping the choir out this morning. You did a very nice job. So, you guys looking forward to anything this week? What's that, Maria? The Thanksgiving feast. The Thanksgiving feast. At the church, and I'm excited for next week. At the church and for next week. What Thanksgiving church at, feast at the church? Or do you mean the stuff going on at the church? Okay. That, that's okay, because uh, to be honest, you, me, I bet I know what. Did you get mixed up the thing that I've been talking about, the Thanksgiving dinner at my husband's church? Maybe? I think it's Allison. <coughs> what? I think it's Allison. Yeah, maybe. But that is true. Jefferson Avenue is having a dinner on Thursday, um, 11 to 1, and it's takeout, and anyone is allowed to go and get a meal if they need one. So, um, if, huh? I bet you prefer your mom's cooking, that's, that's no problem. I prefer my mom's cooking too. But some people don't have a mom to cook for them anymore, and they might need this meal, so. Um, the ladies of that church are going to be cooking it for them. And I know it's turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes. And that's going to make you hungry? Okay, I'll be quiet. Uh, it, it, it's good stuffing. Yeah, it does make you hungry. So you're, you're getting all ready for it for Thursday, right? No, but I mean, you're... you're your mom's probably going to be making a big meal like that for all of you guys to enjoy on Thursday. Thanksgiving, I'm having some of our family coming. Yep. Yeah, so, my grandma and my uncle. All right. And I dare be up to my uncle. Okay. okay. So, family's coming up from uh, the south, and maybe you'll see. Yes, yeah, that's considered the south. <laughs> not, not that far south, that's right. But um, a little south of here. Um, you you got to understand from where I grew up, it is considered the south. <coughs> yep. Do, do you know what also today is? We're celebrating Thanksgiving, but the, the, let's see if any of the big kids know what today is. Yes, and uh, Jess, I wonder, is, is that a little cheating? No. <laughs> I'm teasing. I, I tease Jess because, well, you, you always get all my... She, she's the secretary, so she gets all the stuff that says what things are. So... But she, at least she pays attention. I can tell she pays attention. What, do you guys know what Christ the King Sunday is? It's actually the last day of the church calendar. Uh -huh, what? <laughs> I can see those faces. All right, you know how we normally end with New Year's Eve on the 31st of December. And then we start a brand new year on January 1st, right? Well, this is the last Sunday of the year in the church. Because next week, what begins? Advent? Does that sound familiar? I've got one saying no and one going, I've heard it, I've heard it, but what? <laughs> it's like an ad or calendar. Yeah. Um, I just but, 
that, that's okay. That you, you're learn. You both of you are learning what Advent is. But you know, and it's <coughs> Max begins the new year, and that's when we start our um, waiting period for Christ to show up. Okay, that's what Advent's all about. The the anticipation, the waiting for Christ to be born and show up in that manger. That's Advent. <clears throat> but and today we celebrate the kingship of Christ. Have you heard him been called the King of Kings? Okay. Yes. You've heard Jesus been called the King of Kings and Lords. That's what we're celebrating today, his total uh, deity. Okay? His full um, kingship. Alright? Alright, I, I know I've given you guys a lot to think about. <laughs> and you guys are looking at me going, oh please, my head hurts. So I, I will stop. And I will give you your bulletins. And But before I do, let's have a word of prayer, okay? Lord, we thank you that we have kids that are willing to help the choir. And um, as we wait for this week, as we can celebrate Thanksgiving with our families. And Lord, we are thankful not only for the food and those who are in our lives, but for you. And, that the, and for the gift of salvation that you give us. Be with us as we go back to our seats and um, as we prepare for the comings of Advent. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And this is the time in the service where we share our joys, our concerns, what the Lord's been doing in our lives this past week. Are there those that we need to lift up? Yes, Maria. Who, who was the second one? Her, her mom. Mom. Okay. okay. <laughs> What's that? I hear some mumbling. <laughs> All right. Others this one. Ashlyn. All right. For me, that I stay up till eleven to two tonight because tonight is. Last Elton John concert ever, and they're streaming it live. So, God bless him in retirement, and God bless me that I stay up because this is my last opportunity to see him. So, let's hope I hang in there. And I want to say that I'm very happy that I was to write out all the Thanksgiving cards to everyone, and you are each treasured in my life right now. Well, the rest of my life, but you're all treasured. Others this morning. Karen. Um, prayers for my sister in law, Emily, that's finally got the COVID. <laughs> okay. Not COVID. Wait, <laughs> that she finally got. Everybody else has got her and Lydia has had the COVID. Now she has. The only person in our family that hasn't had is Lydia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so we're all protected? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, there's a story. Okay, not seeing any. Um, let us go on to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly <coughs> Father, we thank you that we are able to gather together and to share our joys and our concerns with one another. And now, Lord, we place them into your loving, caring arms, knowing that that is the best place we can put someone. And Lord, this morning, we lift up Maria's mom and the um, health concerns that she has. And for Aunt B, and for Jeff. Lord, we thank you that um, 
Jeff has recovered well from his surgery and is doing well. We thank you for that. And we continue to pray that uh, B um, continues to get, regain her strength. And Lord, we pray for Emily, who is now um, dealing with COVID. Um, may it not be a hard case, um, and may she not have any lasting effects from it. Um, also, Lord, um, we thank you for Ashley and her um, bubbly attitude and different things that she does within the church. And Lord, um, you've heard her prayers and we ask that you um, help her achieve her goals. And Lord, we pray for all those who are in our hearts and our minds that we may not have spoken, but they mean just as much to us. Send an encouraging word, a smile or a hug that will let them know that this too shall pass. And we pray all this, praying the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you turn in your hymnals to number 528. Jesus there with the criminals, one on his 
right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There is also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanging there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of con condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Thanks. If you turn in the back of your hymnal to number 881, as we prepare to affirm our beliefs by using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you that we are able to gather together and to boldly state what it is we do believe without fear. To be able to come and read your word, hear your word, and live it. And now, Lord, we pray for words that have been prepared that through them or in spite of them, your will will be made known. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I did forget one announcement this morning, because I just found it. Um, I wanted to let you also know that there will be Advent luncheons at West Washington United Methodist Church Fellowship Hall Wednesdays, November 30th, December 7th, and December 14th at noon, and it is free to all who wish to attend. So there are those um, luncheons uh, available uh, this um, Advent season. I'm so used to saying Lenten, I have to watch so I don't trip over my tongue. Um, <coughs> It is a luncheon. Uh, what are they serving? I don't know. But other than that, it's um, a time where you come together for some fellowship, a devotional, and break bread. So um, that is coming, going to happen. And now we're done with the, the last announcement. <laughs> ah, as I told the kids this morning, this is the final Sunday in the church year and that is different from the calendars that we all have hanging on our walls or you follow on your cell phone this last sunday of the church year is always determined by having four sundays before christmas this sunday is also called christ the king sunday in many churches that follow the church year while it is not strange for us to think about kings, we really don't know what it would be like to live with a king as the head of our government, that all-powerful one. We see kings and queens also as simply figureheads, not having any real power at all. So to understand Jesus as king is to have quite a 
different view of life. For us who live in a democracy where our leaders are elected, true kings have absolute authority over everything in their domain. Most of them literally owned all the territory over which they reigned. They owned the people, they had the power of life and death over people. Not like we have the freedom to choose. And they were the judge, the jury, and if they wanted to be, the executioner. Over any person they wanted to wipe out. It is easy to see that for Jesus truly to be king, then he would have to be the power over all people, all events, and behaviors. If Jesus is your king, then you will have to see what control he has over you, your, your behavior, your present, and your future. In the Bible reading called the Good News, it certainly doesn't read like good news, Jesus does not seem to be in charge of the situation at all. He is led away to Skull Hill, being executed the way Romans got rid of criminals and those who thought they should have supreme power, being crucified with two other criminals and is scoffed at by the religious leaders, mocked by the Roman soldiers, and general appears powerless. Surely if Jesus were the king promised for centuries by God's prophets, he never would have gotten into this situation. If he were the king of us, or of anybody, he would have never permitted himself to be wiped out like a common criminal, nor even be associated with criminals. So what's going on here? Well, for centuries, the people of God, known as the Jews, expected someone to show up who would restore their place in the world as an independent country. This king would put down all the enemies and give them the nation a place of high honor, throw off any infringement on them or any way protect them, and the city of Zion, God's city, Jerusalem. Sure, in the trial of Jesus that preceded his crucifixion, Jesus had called himself a king, but not a king as the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, understood the word. You see, Jesus is really king of the world, the one that we inhabit. Unlike you and me, he does not seek his own honor and fame. He comes to be king not only of the people called the Jews, but also of everyone in the whole world. While he is in charge of the world, he does not come to manipulate us so that we get, so that he gets the glory. He comes to rule us by making us free and then joyful and willing to serve him. Of course, you and I would like another kind of king. We want the kind who will save us from all pain and discomfort. A king called him God who will save us from whatever we think we need to be saved from. We want to be saved from other people often from ourselves, from sickness, old age, death, and whatever terrors lay beyond death. We often think, or even say, come on Jesus, you're, ki you're king. Help us, give us what we want. These things we often want are no more than temptations from the father of all lies, the devil himself. He started lying when he told Eve and Adam that they would be as smart as God. They would know what is good for them and what is bad for them. And there were no consequences of their choices. Certainly not anything like death. Did you ever think something was good, desirable for you, and then discover that it was bad? A child may think having to get a flu shot is bad. But let's face it, the opposite is good when he is gets the immunization. But Jesus was not immune to all these assaults. He was hungry, made stones into bread. He wanted people to follow him, jump down right there in the middle of a crowd at worship in the temple. He wanted the world to know him, just do my song and dance, said the devil. And all three of these temptations will be yours. 
here on the cross. Once more, the attacks came. This time from the religious gurus of his time, who taught him how to be a king if he truly was one. From the soldiers who don't care about anything, a little king deserves a little wine, doesn't he? From the governor who mockingly print the sign calling him king of the Jews, to one of the criminals who found himself in the devilish foxhole of the cross asking him to get him out of the situ situation if he really was king. And you know that is precisely what he is doing. He was freeing us once and for all from all those things that choke us and choke the life out of us. Which frustrates us to the point of utter despair. Which chains us to the foreign power of evil and death. He gives us life that is never going to end. He gives us hope when the Tsunamis hit and destroyed all that we th thought was precious and important. And it appears there is nothing good ahead of us. He gives us joy when we have sorrow over our mistakes, errors, and evil. He dies to be king over life, death, and eternity. He does all this through the very action the devil wished him to avoid. His suffering, his death, his resurrection in the tomb then his glorious resurrection where he proclaims to us even today that he is in charge and we're not. One of the criminals had his head screwed on right. He knew that what he was getting was what he deserved. He had no illusions about himself. He knew he deserved the punishment, the humiliation, the pain and the death that was coming his way. I don't know how, but he knew that the man in the center was not only innocent, but that he was more than just a man. He knew Jesus was king, a person to be feared, a person to whom they were accountable. And in an example of faith we could all follow, he asked Jesus a simple question. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. The thief knew somehow that Jesus was king. He trusted that Jesus would live beyond this time and moment in history, live beyond crucifixion, beyond the grave. He knew Jesus would have the power over all, over us, our time, and our eternity. This was a gutsy move by the murderer, crook to believe that he would be remembered. Remembered not only on some kind of tombstone, but remembered and given a place and time again to live. What a statement of faith. To trust that this dying Jesus would, could remember him and give him a place in his kingdom. He didn't ask for a pain pill for life. He didn't ask for sweet life with no difficulties. He just asked to be remembered. And he was and is to this day. Who is king in your life? Whom have you crowned as Lord and Master? Most of the time, it's simply me. I want, I desire, as much as possible, I want to be, believe I am in control. The resilient difficulties we get ourselves into are still pressing in upon us, even though our actions are days, weeks, years, even decades ago. We struggle in life, all of us. We do not desire to follow our true king. We are as rebellious as anyone and everyone could ever be. Yet we are saved from our enemies, who are usually ourselves. Our king remembers us even today. We will be remembered until he calls us home to live with him forever. <coughs> then praise will not be a hope, but the reality of life forever. And for that, we can be truly grateful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are there for us, and that you are the king over us. 
Help us to put you in your rightful place and help us to let others know about you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. If you turn in your hymnal to number 327, crown him with many crowns. Amen. Mm -hmm. 